at this point, we're going to be speaking to Victor Ademana. He's a Ghanaian who's based in Houston, Texas, USA. And um, if you've been monitoring international news, you've realized that Houston was one of the states that was identified as a potential hotspot for coronavirus in the U.S. And so he'll talk to us about what life has been like there. And also we have joining him Ben Carson, who's a Ghanaian studying in China. Good morning, gentlemen, and thank you so much for joining us. I'll start off with Victor. Victor, have you been managing the lockdown so far? Hey, good morning, Bella. And uh, my name is Agbemava, actually. So, Ag Ag um, yeah. Agbemana. Agbemava. Agbemava. Pardon us. Yes. Pardon us. Right. No, that's okay. That's okay. Okay. Um, yeah. Talk to us about what life has been like um, during this coronavirus period in Houston, Texas as well. Um, well, I must confess, life has been very, very... Um, interesting up here in Texas. Uh, I personally work um, down up in um, the DMV area, which is the um, Virginia, and that's where I work. If you could uh, speak out a bit louder for us, we're struggling to hear you. Uh, right. So I was saying that um, life is, it, you know, life has actually changed very much up here in Texas. Um, I personally work up down in Virginia. Mm. But because of all these travel bans and everything, um, I haven't been able to travel back to work. So I'm ca currently um, stuck up here in Texas um, as a result of the travel ban. Okay. But I, I, I know that in Texas overall, they have recorded 9,353 cases with 177 deaths. And this has sort of cast a cloud on... In fact, the whole of U.S. looking at the high number of cases they have, and also for Texas as well. What kind of atmosphere exists in Houston, Texas? Are people scared? Are they worried? Are they adhering to the social distancing rule and all of that? <laughs> um, yes, um, people in Texas, um, generally um, in the whole of the United States, are very much scared of this whole thing. Um, um, initially, when this whole lockdown thing started, um, you know, we tried or we attempted a few times to go to the store to buy a few things to keep just to also, you know, have a kind of a stockpile for the family. Mm -hmm. And Bella, you wouldn't believe it. Um, most places we went to, it's either there was a line to get into this into the grocery store, or um, you get into the grocery store and basically everything is you know, of the shelf. There was mm. practically, you know, empty shelves everywhere. So people kind of were, you know, kind of panicked, bought so many things to the point where we kind of were rationing things up here in the United States. You, you might think, you know, it would never happen here. But so this coronavirus has basically um, crippled mm. America in general and Houston is suffering as well here too. That must be difficult. But let me cross over to Ben Carson, who, by the way, is a Ghanaian studying in China. It's been, what, two days since the lockdown, uh, you know, was revoked. And a lot of people are on the streets as well. What's the general feeling like? Um, all right. Um, good morning, Bella. And let me send special regards to your listeners of uh, TV3 Coronavirus Services Thank you. Um, before I come in to answer your question, uh, let me also send a uh, special... Ben. Yeah, hello, hello, Ben. Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. To my, yeah. to my question now. Right. So what, what has the general atmosphere been like? since the lockdown ended? All right. Um, technically, I would say the lockdown uh, has been lifted, but uh, in reality, we are still in our rooms. As I speak, uh, I'm on my uh, campus. We are not allowed to go outside the school walls. It's it, here. Uh, in every apartment, uh, out to go out, Food and then ben, food. reposition yourself for us a little. I hope it's not our network that's uh, being troublesome. But yes, you were saying that what? Your institution is not allowing students off campus? Yes, please. We are not going out of campus. We are still in our rooms. Uh, you can get out of your room, walk around the campus, but you are not allowed to go outside. Why is that the case? Because... 
I do understand that a lot of people, we've seen some crowding in some parts of China. People finally are happy to step out. What are the reasons why your institution is preventing you from stepping out? All right. Uh, thank you very much. The videos that uh, are circulate, uh, those in the south, mm. uh, Zhou City, and I think Shenzhen, uh, these are people on the Oh, man. So, we're, we're struggling. We're struggling to hear you. I'm not sure what the problem is. I, I would, okay, go ahead. Yeah, Let's hello. see. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. All right. I saw the videos that are circulating. Uh, these are videos of people, especially businessmen and women, that are based in one of China's industrial city mm -hmm. uh, and manufacturing hub, Guangzhou and Shenzhen. Uh, this place has a lot of uh, businessmen and businesswomen. Uh, uh, these are people that are living in their own apartments mm -hmm. or their own hotels. Uh, for students, we are basically on campus and in dormitories. And school gates, uh, I mean the school gates to the school walls are locked. You don't go over or through the school gate. Uh, but for businessmen who are lodging in hotels and apartments, they already had access to the environment, to grocery stores, uh, even during the lockdown. Okay, um, but that means that for that, the over so, 70 days that you've been under lockdown, you've been in one spot on campus. Uh, how were you feeding? Were they providing meals? How were you doing your shopping? All of that. All right. Uh, speaking uh, about the situation of students in general, um, we were in our dormitories. Uh, my school, for instance, you could roam around the campus, go for a walk, but you couldn't go outside of, uh, of the school walls. Uh, one thing that the school made, arrangement, uh, 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 one arrangement that the school made for us was that uh, we have a school mall mm. inside the, 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 the school on campus. So they open every Tuesday and Thursday. Uh, since the lockdown, that has been a process and it is still going on now. Uh, also, uh, e-commerce is, is really developed here in China. So we could actually buy things online and it will be delivered in two to three days. Um, and we could collect it at the school gate, but you don't go outside the gate. You collect it at the school gate and then you come back to your dormitory. That has been the process from the lockdown even till now that the lockdown is technically lifted. How are you able to afford some of these things? Did you ever receive any token from government? Um, did you, are you one of the people who probably received the gari? Is that really true? And if you didn't receive anything from them, how did you have enough money to survive buying food from the mall all throughout the over 70 days under lockdown? Uh, all right. Thank you, Bella. I know we are um, maybe pressed with time, but before I answer that, that is why I wanted to send solidarity message from the students to all Ghanaians, especially health workers, uh, military personnel who are helping at the front line, helping fight this virus. Ghanaians in China are very grateful. Uh, first to the government, uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Embassy for Intervention. Okay, reposition yourself again. It looks as if when you're about to give us the vital Hello, information. Bella. Aha, yeah, go ahead. All right, can you hear me now? Yes, you are talking about government intervention. Yes, please. Uh, I said, um, we students in China here are very grateful mm -hmm. to the government and then to uh, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and, um, and the embassy. They came in to help. Um, they distributed food items, in fact, to all, not necessarily students alone, but to all Ghanaians here. Those that were in the epicenter, Wuhan and then Hubei, every student received food items and $500. Every uh, student, you can account for that. Every, every Ghanaian yes, student. We, yes, I, I, I doubled as a PhD student and the Secretary General of Nooks China. I have the thing. That were living in the province, each hundred dollar each. Okay. Plus. Okay. Reposition. Okay. Reposition. Reposition again. <laughs> Apologies. I mean, that's yeah, what happens with technology. Go ahead. So you said that everyone received what five hundred dollars. 
Yes, please. We are talking about three over 350 Ghanaians. Uh, the figures, I think there's just one person who is still having challenges receiving his uh, money yet. Yeah. But for uh, 349 of them have already received their $500 in cash. Um, um, actually, it was paid through their bank account, plus Gary, Kenke, This Way, and some other food items that were shipped by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to them. Wow. And so uh, food items were provided, and those in the epicenter who they received this amount of money, uh, but the rest that were outside of Hubei province, uh, technically, our lockdown wasn't as intense as those that were in Hubei province, the epicenter of the disease. Mm. So uh, we would say we couldn't uh, get money or financial assistance, but uh, the embassy, under the auspices of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, supplied food items uh, and um, nose masks, yeah. specifically, to almost every Ghanaian uh, whose address were provided okay. uh, by Nux China and the Ghanaian company. All right, let me come to Victor, not to make you feel like I've left you out, out of the conversation, but this is a very worrying trend. What it says is that black Americans are facing alarming rates of coronavirus infection in some states. And I'm just going to mention a few of them because I know it says here that in Illinois, 43% of people who have died from the disease and 28% yeah. of those who have tested positive are African Americans. Okay, a group that makes 15% of the United States total population. Now also, it says that in a place like Louisiana, about 70% of the people who have died are black. Okay, right. so this seems to be the trend in some of the states in the U.S. And, you know, they are generalizing saying that it looks like the African-Americans are the most affected. Is it casting a dark cloud on the situation and what could possibly happen to a lot of the Africans as well? And what do you think could be the reason why it's affecting them more than the whites? Um... In terms of casting a doubt cloud, um, I believe it's not really the case as long as you abide by the strict um, regulations that has been put in place as in stay at home, don't go out if it's not necessary. And if you do go out, um, go through the processes or protocols that has been put out in, uh, to safeguard yourself and your family. So with that said, um, potentially the reason why... Um, African Americans are much more exposed is because the areas where African Americans are, are kind of densely populated. Mm. And so when um, something happens, for example, if you go to New York, it's not particularly like that here in Texas because most, most of the places where we go to, we have to drive and all that. But when you go to places like New York and um, and places like, say, Louisiana, Florida, and other places, they very much, you know, um, densely populated mm -hmm. and most of these people um, go on, on, on buses and trains and stuff to get to work exactly so they yeah, their exposure rate is higher mm -hmm. and um, and so I believe that is why they have much more cases comparatively to um, you know places where they are not um, densely populated you are saying that it's not the um, same situation in Houston in terms of the demographic mm -hmm. rates, um, mm -hmm. yes, um, I haven't. We haven't gotten much update here in, Tex in Texas here as to um, the rate at which the blacks are dying comparatively to the other, you know, other colors are dying. So then, how how are you guys managing? I'm sure you're able to step out, uh, you know, to go shopping like you mentioned. But I also read that there's a park that is being closed as well um you know and that should happen any moments from now what could have been the reason why they announced that that park was closing right so um they put all these social distancing and a couple of protocols where you know basically laid out but people weren't adhering to it so they they found out a few places where people were gathering people were kind of not you know practicing the social distancing mm. and initially the the mayor came out on tv and said hey if you guys don't keep um the pro uh, protocols that we have put in place we're going to you know basically shut out the mm -hmm. the parks and i believe people were not adhering to it so it's kind of i think it's a safety measure to close it to kind of control the rate at which people will be exposed in some of the states, I know that people have already started receiving money from governments because, you know, governments announced that they right, were going the to stimulus, give a stimulus yes. package and also would give right. 
an amount of money to individuals who may not be employed and for the vulnerable as well. In Houston, do you know of any situation like that? Has it started? Are people receiving money? Does it look like it would happen? Right. So the stimulus is not just for a, um, just yeah. a particular group of people. It's mm. for the whole country. So everyone that has um, basically filed their taxes for 2018, 2019 mm. um, will receive the money. But as to where the money has started coming in, no, it hasn't. I haven't received mine yet. So um, I don't know any, if any other person has received this yet. But it's, uh, it's everybody that has filed their taxes you know, qualifies to get it. Okay. Now, now back to you quickly, Ben Carson, and then we'll move. This morning, we spoke to a young woman. Ben, can you hear us? Hello, Ben. Okay. Uh, we're, we're having a bit of a struggle with Ben. But anyway, thank you so much, Victor Agbemava. Correct. Thank you He's a Ghanaian based in Houston, Texas, USA, and he just gave us an update on the situation there. Thank you so much for speaking to us. We're very grateful. Thank and we also much. spoke to... Ben Carson, and he's a Ghanaian studying in China. He's also an executive member of NUCS in China. And so I wanted to find out if some students were also affected by the eviction notice that has been put out in some of the cities asking Africans to evacuate their homes and, you know, premises because it looks like racism is at play here. But of course, the Foreign Affairs Ministry will receive that information if they haven't already, and I'm sure they can follow up on that. And so thank you all so much for speaking to me. I'm